Hello, my name is Bethany Chaplin, and I'm the Minnesota Green Corps member serving with Crow Wing Soil and Water Conservation District, and today I'll be giving a presentation on best management practices in your backyard. So a review from last time. So a best management practice is a practice that helps reduce stormwater runoff and improve water quality. So our first one we're going to talk about today is rain gardens. So a rain garden is a shallow landscape depression that captures, cleans, and absorbs stormwater runoff from roots, parking lots, and roads. Runoff is collected from these paved and other hard surfaces and directed into the rain garden. The depression is filled with a mixture of sand, topsoil, compost, and all this filters out that stormwater runoff. A typical rain garden is between six to nine inches deep. And the native plants that are typically planted in these rain gardens do not require fertilizer um, and they help reduce, um, help filter out those stormwater pollutants and they provide food and habitat for birds, butterflies and other pollinators. So on the left, we have a Buffalo rain garden tour. Um, there was a series of rain gardens that were planted in 2014 near Little Buffalo Creek, which flows into the Mississippi River. And there was a series of rain gardens that were planted that summer. Um, so my coworker Sheila um, did a presentation on this. So she will walk you through what it looks like now in winter 2020. And these were all planted with native plants um, like cul culver's root, columbine, blue flag iris, and mountain mint. So let's talk about pollinator habitat. So insects and pollinators are disappearing at alarming rates. Major factors include loss of plant use as food sources, nesting habitat, disease, pesticide use, and pests. More than one third of all plants and plant products consumed by humans are dependent on pollinators. So some things you can do to help are plant a variety of native flowering plants, have nesting sites available and clean water sources, and avoid pesticide use. Um, the two pictures on the left show some native plants in Minnesota. So we have purple prairie clover with a bumblebee and then swamp milkweed with a monarch. So another thing you can do is convert your lawn. So that first image puts some roots plant prairie. That one shows what a typical lawn will look like. So that's on the far left right here. So a typical lawn has root depths from two to six inches, um, but if you're mowing your lawn at sh a shorter length than that, you will have shorter roots. And then these prairie plants have roots of depths up to 15 feet. And since they have deeper roots, there's a couple different benefits that come with this. You'll have better soil erosion control because the deeper roots help stabilize the soil. You'll have better stormwater infiltration um, and healthier soil with the pore spaces made through root growth. There will be less long-term maintenance because you're not mowing. Um, there is a greater resistance to weeds and then you're reducing your weed spray use and then they provide a wildlife habitat. So this bottom image is from Blue Thumb and they promote a thing called a pollinator lawn. So a pollinator lawn introduces a diversity of low growing flowering plants into a typical lawn. This provides food for pollinators and the plants have deeper roots and need less watering. If you're not concerned with having a uniform carpet of green lawn in frequently used areas, this may be the best option to help restore ecological function in your lawn. And these species can tolerate being mowed up to three inches and they include creeping thyme, ground plum and self heal. And then another option you can see on the right side of my screen is a low maintenance turf. So low maintenance turf functions as a typical lawn, but is composed of species that require less water and fewer inputs. This option may be appealing if you want to keep the appearance of a traditional lawn and have frequent areas of intense use. So that first image is going to show um, a new lawn seed pack that we promote at Crow Wing Soil and Water. And we saw that on our website. So these photographs are from a customer and they show the realistic um, timeline for how long it takes the native seeds to establish. But when they do establish, they're very resilient and strong. So we have some maintenance advice from the landowner. Um, I mow every two to three weeks, even though it's suggested to mow at a higher height. 
A normal height has been just fine over the five years. I'm hoping to collect the seeds and try planting it in the spring in other areas. And then the next image is from Minnesota Native Landscapes. So they have a low grow fescue blend. So the low grow fescue mix um, will provide an attractive ground cover that is hardy and requires little to no watering or mowing and can range from full sun to shade. It will reach heights of 10 to 12 inches if left unmown or it can be mowed a couple of times per growing season for a shorter look and it is adapted for soils from sandy to somewhat heavy clay. So then another practice you can implement is a shoreline restoration or a buffer. So buffer strips or other are other areas of land with permanent vegetation and plants. Buffers can help protect soil, air, and water quality. By planting trees, shrubs, flowers, and grasses, you can catch pollutants in both the surface and in the groundwater before the pollutants reach a water body, such as a lake, stream, or river. And then other benefits include slowing the stormwater runoff, which allows the sediments to settle out before entering a stream, lake, or river. And it stabilizes the shoreline to reduce erosion along the banks, and it provides habitat for wildlife. So the image on the left shows what a shoreline or a stream bank edge or a river edge would look like. It would have different types of plants all the way up the bank. And then this image right here shows what um, beaches look like today. Most people want clean and clear beaches without any vegetation, um, but that's not natural for the landscape. So a lot of erosion happens. So we can see in these other images, they have rocks um, that help um, protect the shoreline from waves that come up on to the land. So that helps reduce erosion. And then we have plants that are grown along the slope to help reduce erosion as well. And then next we have rain barrels. So a rain barrel or cistern is a container that is placed under a downspout that collects water from rainfall events. Most rain barrels hold 50 to 55 gallons of water. You can make your own or buy one at a store. They help reduce runoff and erosion on your property by capturing that water. And you can provide an alternative source of water for landscape plants and cleaning cars. It should, however, not be used to plant on plants such as fruits, vegetables, herbs, and edible flowers um, because it is not treated from a water treatment plant and you're going to be eating these. And then it is important to empty the rain barrel in the late fall so that the water doesn't freeze in there over winter and crack your rain barrel. And then some other things to look for when buying a rain barrel is a childproof screen. Um, this helps keep children out, but it also helps um, reduce the leaf litter that enters your rain barrel and insects like mosquitoes. And then most of them have this spigot here that you can attach a hose to or put a, a watering can underneath um, to help water your yard and plants. So then one event that we promote at Crow Wing Soil and Water Conservation District is our native tree and plant sale. So this year we're holding a virtual open house on January 27th um, from 11 to 2 p.m. And we have some speakers that are coming in from Minnesota Native Landscapes and Prairie Restoration. So they sell native plants and trees. And then we have a forester coming in to talk about different forestry in Minnesota. Um, and to order trees and plants, um, you can go to our website or call our office or send an order through the mail. And we have a goal of selling 1 million trees to help promote clean soil and healthy water. So then here are some resources for you. Um, the first link is for our tree sale that I just mentioned. And then we have the new lawn seed pack that was shown in a previous slide. Um, and then we have some different um, native uh, plant nurseries that we promote. Um, and then we have the blue thumb turf and lawn alternative information attached. And then the U of M has some information on rain barrels and growing landscapes to help bees and other pollinators. So thank you so much for listening to my presentation today and please reach out if you have any further questions.